Seven definitive answers to seven questions I have no time for. One, yes, my parents own a fish and chip shop, which is to say I come from a long line of travelers who crossed oceans to be here, uprooted entire villages to plant seeds on stolen land. Golden batter, deep fried, each sizzle sparks not shame or embarrassment any longer, but pride. Two, my dick is definitely bigger than your boyfriends, your brothers, your fathers. What can I say? Low expectations work in my favor. Strange to be emasculated at such a young age. Drive like an Asian, throw like a girl. Boys at urinals pointing with pointed remarks. Why are white people so obsessed with my genitals anyway? As if the measure of a man was defined by inches alone, as if manhood was our greatest. Excuse me, sir, my eyes are up here. Three, I admit it. My romantic history is littered with the likes of you. I can't help it. You're all just so cute. Turns out I have a fetish for colonizers. No kink shaming, please. But I wouldn't worry, because in the future, we'll all be kind of Asian anyway. Golden tans and dolphin smooth skin. After all, Aotearoa is the melting pot you demanded to mount. So look at us all melting, melting, melting. Four. Yes, the owners of the Chinese restaurant are laughing at you. Every time you mispronounce the food, every time you treat the culture like a zoo, every time you enter like we should be grateful for you. Ni hao, motherfuckers, is what we say underneath our breath. And I suppose it's rude for us to speak our language in your country. Oh, you mean like writing a treaty and mistranslating sovereignty? Five. Yes, I'm allowed to say chink. No, you're absolutely not. Six. Yes, I play the race card sometimes, but it's the only way to level the playing field. If by race card you mean my skin, if by race card you mean the entire continent you view me through, if by race card you mean not knowing if what I do is the product of pity or courage to never being painted victor without victim, as if this prison was something I chose to live in. Seven, I am angry because I've never given myself permission to be angry before. 29 years of non-contesting smiles, placating nods to endless questions. I am sick of endless questions to ayahs and Jackie Chans, to jokes of slanted eyes and small dick size to your English is very good and we really like your food. And I am angry because I didn't know it could be such a powerful tool until now because I am only just beginning to be honest with myself learning and unlearning my role in all of this. The longest car ride ever endured. Sweet man dad drove me from Christchurch to Auckland. 1,071 kilometers, the big move. That's 51 half marathons. Exhausting. Just me, dad, and the Subaru legacy. Didn't know yet that time is the greatest distance between two people, memory, a river. Sweet man dad asked me, pestered me to blah 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 to keep him awake. My stifled tongue couldn't get the job done. Tied to the promise, the promise I made to myself, come out to him before I move to Auckland. So here we are, cutting it fine, mid-move to Auckland, moving to Auckland, literally on the move, in the vehicle. Not quite proud yet, but watch this space. At this point, the gayest thing I've done is offer to blow a friend and fist an Irishman, and he let me, the friend and the Irishman. And I guess that's progress, but the truth is, pride is just an abstract notion. Can't feel pride any more than truth. Can't feel pride any more than fact or fiction. Feels more like a verb than a noun, if you know what I mean. A thing I do, pride. Making posts, pride. Waving flags, pride. Watching my own private Idaho for the upteenth time pride. Sometimes just not giving a fuck what people think and I guess that's pride enough. But the truth is I feel tired and hungry most of the time. I'm worried it's chronic fatigue syndrome, but my GP tells me that's just late capitalism, kiddo. And before I can say, but doc, how do you know these aren't the early stages? I'm feeding, feeding 
feeding this poor boy, this poor body. Cut to that time in intermediate school where a boy named Elliot bound his foot to mine. Three-legged race to be clear. And suddenly, just like that, we're all ankle, kissing ankle, and yeah, I was a horny teenager, but it wasn't one of those horny teenage moments. Didn't feel guilt or shame. Felt tender and sweet. G-rated even, or PG. Because nothing gay is ever allowed to just be G, you see. Cut to. That time at the back of the fish and chip shop and dad is telling you how Heath Ledger probably killed himself because he played a homosexual in Brokeback Mountain and that does things to a kid, you know. Twists them up and makes them feel like homosexuality is so contagious it can be caught through the power of performance. And I too believe in the magic of playing pretend. I too believe stories can change our lives, but not like that. At least I hope not. The lesson. The things you love can kill you. Love can kill you. Art can kill you. Men can kill you. And I guess that's not news, but... And it's strange to think you've peaked in some ways and not in others. Like being told 30 was gay death was funny five years ago, but now that 30 is on the horizon, I get it. Not that I have the audacity to claim I'm old, Though my body does ache, my bones do feel it. Cut to, and suddenly I'm going through all my shit, rediscovering that box set of HBO's The Wire, realising I'll never get around to finishing it because I broke up with that ex, wondering what all this clutter ever amounted to. And I think, Dad was always a hoarder, so I'll be a hoarder too. Ancestral trauma or genetics? <laughs> It's all much of the muchness when you're diaspora. And just like that, I'm thinking about what home means again. Dispersing, dispersing, dispersing. And didn't I ask this question enough in my early 20s? Like enough is enough. I'm just calling New Zealand home from now on. It says as much on the passport. And maybe she's born with it. Or maybe it's white supremacy, she being me to be clear. Not because I use she, her pronouns, but because I'm the sort of gay that wants you to know that I don't mind she, her pronouns because I'm woke or whatever. And that's pride, right? That's progress. Like not proud enough to wear a crop top to show my midriff, but proud enough to make jokes about blowjobs and poems. Cut to. And I'm at a party telling a friend that I love Taylor Swift. Irony or no irony, I don't know. I guess I just like to argue about art sometimes. At this point, I've listened to Blank Spaced more times than makes sense. I tell him it's a really well-constructed pop song, which I think I believe. But why is this the hill I'm prepared to die on? Maybe it's the weed, or maybe it's Maybelline. Like smoking a huge bong hit, eating space cake, spinning out, and trying to convince the cute stoner boy. You're fine, you're groovy, and suddenly your face flat, throwing up. And just like that, Dad's back behind the wheel and he asks you why are you so quiet and I say dad I'm gay Komi o Totahi. Christchurch was the boy that everyone in Auckland made fun of, except for me. I left him desperately, wanting to carve my name in new soils. One day he called me up, Nathan, won't you come home? Why won't you come back home? And I said, because there's nowhere to eat past midnight except Denny's, and you made yourself a haven for boy racers and skinheads. And he said, yeah, fair enough. But Nathan, I've changed. I go by a different name now, my old name, my ancient name. Call me O To Tahi. See, I've even picked up some Rayo. Why don't you stay, visit, just for a little while? So I did, dipped a toe in your waters, toe after toe, time after time, waves of it crashing 
crashing, crashing against my shore, whole body sinking into your arms. And look, I'm no nature poet. I'm bad with metaphors and metaphysics. Can't decorate landscapes with language for shit. So bear with me. O totahi, you are flatter than a flat white. O totahi, you are whiter than a flat white. O totahi, you are flatter and whiter than a flat white. Sorry, it's hard for me to be sincere. It was you that taught me irony, dry wit, avoidance, stoicism before I ever knew what stoicism was. I was your dirty little secret. Now I guess you're kind of mine. Hey, no relationship is perfect. O totahi, maybe I'm just a slut for Stockholm Syndrome. You are my Gloria Vale. You are my Manson family. You are my insert problematic creepy cult here. When I am not with you, I am a conspiracy theorist searching for reasons to bring us together. You are my Pizzagate. You are my QAnon. You are my flat earth baby. This is not a love poem. This is confession wrapped in justification. Call me sentimental. Call me excessive. Call me saccharine or effusive. Call me anytime you want, because I'll be here. Like a drinking game where you take a shot every time. Dave Dobbin sings loyal. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Get it? Because he sings loyal a lot. O totahi, you're like wondering where all the good dick is gone. Like who the fuck do I have to fuck to get fucked around here? O totahi, loving you means loving men with the same voices that called me gook growing up. Means realizing love is not unconditional. And I am not the romantic I once thought I was. Because I want conditions, o totahi. So lines can be drawn, so lines are not crossed. Because loving a city that does not love you back is a cruel sort of citizenship. So when I think of you, talk of you, say your name, you remember my first better than anyone. First time, first kiss, first crush, first racism. Yeah, that's a real special one. Ototahi, Christchurch. Ototahi, Christchurch. Home, home, home. You shapeshifter, still shifting. Like falling back in love with an ex. Yes, gross, but worth the risk, I hope.